And now, the new caribou, the Honorable Sir David, Emperor of Salt Lake City, Sultan of Utah, spiritual advisor to questioning Mormons, the bard extraordinaire, supreme being, Alpha and Omega. Here's David. <laughs> Where's the cameraman? Alpha, Omega, your asses are on probation. <laughs> now the cameraman. The cameraman. Where the hell are you? You're showing just my head to the people. Anyway. <laughs> this is a total commercial. If you don't if you don't want to send money to my cause to the Philippines, turn this one off. It's going to be boring as hell, okay? Where's the ca Allison? Allison, you changed the camera on the video. All right, here we go. I'm going to show you something, and I think I can do this. I don't know. Let me see. Okay, let me see if I can get that. Okay, let me get a little closer. Do you see that little girl? Okay, do you see no socks, borrowed shoes, skinny little arms, skinny little legs, rotten house. That's the house in the Philippines. Uh, they're all rotted like that because of the rain. And I don't think, I don't know if I can get her close enough. Okay, there she is. Okay, that's my baby, Allison. And when I got her in the Philippines, she was in uh, a hospital and about to die because no one had $24 to send for penicillin for typhoid fever. I sent the $24. I got her out of the hospital, and uh, she is my uh, adopted daughter today. Now, cameraman, pan back. God, I'm going to fire his... I'm going to fire his ass. I can't find anyone that's confident except me. Now, here is the new Allison. Now, this was a year ago or so ago. That's my girl now. She's uh, nine years old there. And uh, she's in public school. And uh, in the Philippines, uh, she couldn't afford to go to public school. And uh, she has finally, you people, you people, helped her to understand about bank accounts. When she was watching me set up bank accounts for the Philippines, she wanted a bank account. And now she'll be 10 next week. If you want to send her birthday money, just tag it. <laughs> she keeps thinking, all this money is hers. <laughs> I go, honey, it's fiduciary. Daddy can't spend one damn dime on you. Oh, okay, can I, can I get on and ask for money? <laughs> I, go, I guess you could. <laughs> You're resourceful, little girl. You could ask for money. So her birthday is uh, January 7th. <clears throat> She'll be 10 years old. If you want to send Allison a few bucks for her um, birthday, uh, you're welcome to do that. But make sure you tag it that it's for Allison. Don't don't commingle any of the money. If your money's being sent for other children who did not get out of the Philippines and who are hungry, uh, please tag it so I don't ever mistake and uh, commingle the money. So anyway, uh, could I get the cameraman? <laughs> you bastard. I think he's on vacation today. I, he's in the break room? Okay, he's in the break room. Okay, I'm going to break his neck. <laughs> Cameraman, take the, take the insulation out of the picture. All right, all right. So, that's what a few dollars can do, folks. That's what a few dollars. I don't mean, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'm not asking you to donate thousands of dollars or get into a monthly, you know, you can save this child for nineteen ninety five a month. No. That ain't the Bard's way. The Bard is I don't need God to tell me what the hell to do. I've lived sixty five years. I know what the hell to do. I'm not going to have them miss their Christmas here in my family. No. I'm gonna like I said in my last video, I'm gonna give thirty bucks a couple days here when we get paid. And if I'm not willing to put my money into my uh, program, why should you put any in? Why should you put any in? I know what a few dollars can do for a child in the Philippines. Um, I have a picture of Abigail. I'll show you a picture of Abigail the same way. Abigail never smiled in the Philippines. Never smiled in the Philippines. And when she met me the first day that we met, um, she didn't really know who I was, and I didn't know who she was. And she ran across the, the room with a little towel wrapped around her and grabbed me like I was Jesus. My heart just melted. 
I never imagined at that moment I would have any way of adopting a foreign child at my age with my mental illness and with uh, the divorces that I've had I never thought I would be cleared by any court and any psychologist well she's here in the United States now Allison said to me the other day the the nine-year-old she says dad I have to go to school early I have to practice square dancing I don't know, really so you're learning to square dance she says, yes and when I touched and held the boy of the hand the hand of the boy it felt good I go oh shit <laughs> she's only in third grade Allison <laughs> so I, I'm trained as a social worker so I've been trained not to ever respond to uh, idiotic chaos so I rode along a little bit in the car and I said well honey I said um, if this boy uh, asked you to marry him would you marry him in an instant <laughs> I said Allison you're in third grade she said, well, it felt good on my hand. I go, gee. <laughs> so I dropped her off at school. She was getting out of the car, and she said, Dad, I'll see you later. And I said, Allison, please, make your hand behave. <laughs> She's laughing her butt off, and off she goes to school. Well, my little Abigail, um, she was in um, public school in the Philippines. I think it's 60 pesos, which is a dollar and a half per year. Some of the kids can't go. Their parents don't have a dollar and a half. And uh, Abigail, I moved out of um, the Filipino public school into a private school. Now, that sounds fancy in the United States. My kids are in a uh, private school. And it wasn't that fancy, believe me. But if you were an American, your children were kidnapped or killed uh, or held for ransom. And I had to protect her and Allison, so I moved them over to... Uh, a private uh, school and Allison uh, did very well on the test the pretest to get in Abigail flunked the pretest and the principal came to me and says you know Abigail's not smart enough she'll never make it here you're gonna have to keep her back in the Filipino public school and uh, I went home and I thought about it a little bit and then I got a little um, email from Abigail that said dad I'm really sorry that um, I don't smile but I'm not a happy person. I'm so poor. Yeah. That broke my heart, melted my heart. I went back over to the school and I said, listen, I think she can make it. I think that she's just in a situation with 60 kids in a classroom. She's not going to matriculate there, but I think she can. And I don't want to divide the girls up. I want them to stay together. So you take her for a month. I'll pay for it. And if at the end of a month uh, she's not matriculating, kick her out. I'll make other arrangements. Well, long story short, she matriculated. She began to smile. She's working now. Uh, I insist that my kids work. Yeah, I'm a bad dad. I'm a bad dad. She's 14 years old, and she babysits. She washes cars, and she cleans people's houses. And boy, she is not a spender. She is a saver. And I went down and got her her own account and her own uh, ATM card that she can get out of her account. And she saves and saves. The girl hardly ever gives a penny to anyone. And she donated $20, which is a lot of money for Abigail, to uh, her brother. And I tagged it in the Philippines. And he got 800 pesos. And um, he bought, um, what did they say he bought? He bought a, a pencil, a pencil that writes that has, um, you know, cartridges inside the pencil and some other kind of a small item that was his Christmas that was his Christmas he doesn't have many teeth at all he was like Allison uh, uh, Axel is 12 and you see a picture of him uh, you know you're looking at five thousand dollars of dental work on a 12 year old no milk nothing so Abigail now plays classical piano she can hear a song on the, the radio or the TV or what. Not the radio. <laughs> they don't listen to radios. <laughs> oh, shit. Marconi was my classmate. <laughs> she bought, with her own money, an iPhone. She bought, with her own money, school clothes for herself. She bought, with her own money, a little computer. It's not a big one, but it's a little computer. And her earphones. And uh, Mom put her on uh, our signal. Uh, Wi-Fi so that she can call her friends and whatever here's a girl that had nothing was nothing 
Now she is class. She dresses like a little princess. She has many friends, all classes, all colors, all races, um, all um, dialects. She has, you know, Mexican friends. She's taking Spanish. She's learning to speak Spanish. So she'll be trilingual. She speaks Spanish, uh, Tagalog, and um, Visayan. And she's an A student. Straight A student. She works and works. In that bedroom over there, that light is on from 4 o'clock when she gets home until 9 or 10 at night. And I'm here, you know, Dad, is this how it, is this the right word? Dad, uh, you know, I'm doing homework. She's a straight A student. She ran on the track team last year. Now, for you that have kids and some money, th those are not unusual things. In the Philippines, they're unheard of. They're unheard of. Do your children have a couple of guards with an AK-47 standing in front of the school so people don't come in and kill? Well, you know, now that I say this, it doesn't have as much effect as it did with all those poor little kids in Connecticut that were killed. But that's what was going on and still goes on every damn day in the Philippines. So. I took my retirement money. No, I'm not a big important person. No, I don't have a big head. No, I had other things to do. You know, I could have got a boat or, you know, maybe some kind of a cabin and bought some guns and hunting and a little bit of stuff like that. Maybe I could have bought a couple of 14-year-olds. Where's Joseph when you need him? Where's the Smith syndrome when you need him? Anyway, I spent my retirement money for uh, the kids. 20000 each to immigrate here and Mercy, 20000 about $60,000. And I don't have a lot. I have enough. I have a nice house, new cars, and, you know, I have enough. But these kids had nothing. And for me to give them a dollar or two dollars, I'm telling you, they lit up like a, a, a fireworks show at a, at a Chinese parade. When I was in the Philippines and I gave them uh, 40 pesos, which is a dollar, they could walk down, there was no transportation, they could walk down to the little store and all the kids, in the neighborhood followed them because they knew they had an American father and that Allison would probably buy for everybody out of her money. Abigail bought for herself. <laughs> She's changing a little bit, but Allison, my gosh, that little girl shared everything. And they would go down to the store and buy little penny pieces of candy and it was money that they never had. Money, they little kids with no clothes, with skinny little arms, with... Um, you know, be a beautiful big smiles. They're happy people, but they're very poor people. So, let me go back. Cameraman! Shit. He's still in the break room. He's a damn American. <laughs> Where's the... Here... <laughs> Props! Props! Get your ass in! <laughs> All right. Here is... the baby of the hour. Folks, that's the way I found her. And that's the way you're finding your children when you feed them for a week. One dollar will feed that child for a week in the Philippines. Five dollars will feed her for a month. So if you've got it, flaunt it. <laughs> you men especially, the women are still outdoing the men. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to challenge not only Monson to match what I'm doing, but the Mormons. I haven't gotten one donation from the Mormons. 30,000 Mormons have looked at my channel. I get about 150, 200 a day. Not one! Break your record, Mormons. Send it in and say, I'm a Mormon and I'm proud to feed children. I'm not just going to build malls anymore and I'm not going to just send money where I don't know where it goes. You show me the receipts, you show me the kids, you show me barred rice going into them, I'm on board. Okay, appreciate you guys. You can donate, go over to the uh, YouTube uh, New Caribou webpage, there's um, post office boxes there, there's um, PayPal and credit cards. So for Allison and uh, the rest of the kids over there, do what you think is right. Please don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to do this. Thanks.
And now, the new caribou, the Honorable Sir David, Emperor of Salt Lake City, Sultan of Utah, spiritual advisor to questioning Mormons, the Bard extraordinaire, Supreme Being, Alpha and Omega. Here's David. Hello, I'm Allison, the adopted daughter of Sir David the Bard. My father isn't telling me what to say. I cannot lie. I was born in the Philippines, and I've been there till I was six years old. I have experienced some tragedies, which was pretty deadly. Please donate to the hungry and suffering people. If I was still there, I'd be dead now, because I, I had typhoid fever. I still have 12 years old brother in there who needs more clothing and food. Who would, he would never get, get this in his lifetime. Please donate on the new caribou site. Thank you, good night, God bless America.